Can you guess who today's special guest is? If you can't, read the hat, read the shirt. You see it. Indian Hills Community College. They just started a wrestling program. They got men's wrestling. They got women's wrestling. They're in God's country, Southern Iowa. Doesn't get much better than that. We have head coach Cole Spree on the show. It's their first year as a wrestling program. It's our first year as a wrestling media, whatever. Enjoy the interview. How's Centerville treating you? Are you liking it down there? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously new, but I'm, you know, a smaller town guy, born and raised, you yeah. know, in northern Iowa, but then obviously Ellsworth was in a smaller town too, so pretty similar. So yeah. not much different. You grew up in uh, Applington Parkersburg. That's football country, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. And uh, do they have a strong wrestling uh, tradition as well, or? You know, we've, I mean, we've had quite a few state champions, uh, like a fair amount, but I mean, it's never been our strongest sport. Obviously, we were more known for like football and mm -hmm. some of the girls' sports as well. So, well, right on. Uh, so I think let's. For those of you who don't know, Coach Spree here is the head coach of the Indian Hills uh, Community College Wrestling Program. Uh, this is year one. What a year to start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything's changing right now. They actually just announced uh, junior college. We won't be competing until second semester. and Our national tournament got pushed back into April. So I think they're just trying to be proactive with everything. So I, as long as there's a season, I'm okay with whenever it is. Now, did you guys did you guys already have a schedule, and then uh, they had to come out with a new schedule, or did you not even have a schedule at that point? Yeah, we had had a schedule. Um, obviously, we kind of you know with us trying to you know promote our guys and you know move them on to you know four year schools. You know, we try to compete in open tournaments where we can see you know Division ones, Division twos, NAIs, and stuff like that. So we had those scheduled, and then our conference had come out you know with our conference dual meet schedule. Um, and the national tournament was set, and that was set for the first weekend of March. So, I mean, yeah, everything was in place. Um, but, you know, the girls' side, they're holding, you know, true to what their original schedule is. So, it would be nice for me. You know, they kind of offset each other now. We'll pretty much be closing up on the girls' season when the guys' season's getting to go. So. Right on. Well, um, I grew up down in Centerville. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. I grew up down there, and uh, – I, re I actually grew up really close to the campus there, and I always thought in my head there's so much talent in that area that just either didn't want to – they didn't go and end up wrestling anywhere because, they you know, they didn't want to go to um, – maybe not want to leave southern Iowa in a way. So I was always, like – I always wanted, you know, a wrestling program down there. Um, what was the appeal to you to, like, you know, hey, we're starting from scratch. You know, is this something that you'd be interested in? I think the biggest thing is Indian Hills and just Indian Hills tradition. You know, they're nationally recognized pretty much in every sport, you know, and, you know, when Brett Monahan, the athletic director, gave me a call to see if it'd be something that I was interested in, you know, his big pitch was when we do something, we do it right, you know, and when I came down to meet with them, I think that was pretty clear, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen, you know, they're building this brand new facility, um, I think it'd be probably one of the nice facilities in junior college, um, obviously coaching wise. That's all I do now, you know, where I was in a position where a lot of you know, smaller schools are and you kind of do a dual role, you know, you coach, but then you have to do another piece with your coaching. You know, now all I have to do is coach and then, you know, just a lot of the other resources, the assistant coaches and pay for them and stuff like that, you know, was definitely appealing. And so I'm just excited. You know, I, I think the, being the first kind of thing, you know, obviously was intriguing you know, just to see what we could do. You know, it's just, for me, it was time for a new challenge and, you know, what better than start from the ground up. Absolutely. Um, so what, what does, like, day one look like when you're starting a program? Or do you start, like, all right, let's start getting the recruits going, like the recruiting scene or, or you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all we could do this year. You know, obviously, we weren't competing. You know, I got hired uh, mid-October. And I think probably the biggest thing that I put, you know, I – I started recruiting, but the biggest priority I had was getting, you know, help, you know, getting a coach on staff and, you know, we were able to, you know, I was here for a couple months by myself, but ultimately then we were able to scoop up coach Jeffrey. Um, and he's been with me since December, you know, just doing both the men's and the women's side of things all by yourself. Um, 
probably not the easiest route to go. So I knew that was something that I needed to do. But yeah, I, I did get going, especially on the women's side, just because, you know, like during the whole interview process, you know, I, I knew girls are planners, boys are procrastinators, you know, and, I, and I've recruited the boys side, you know, the men's side, you know, for, I don't know, 10, 11 years, you know, I knew a lot of them would not make their final decision, especially our, like, the better kids that we're trying to get at our level, you know, we're, they're not going to make decisions until April, you know, May. So I knew I had time. So I, I put an emphasis on the girls. And then when Coach Jeffrey got here, um, he kind of took over that, you know, side of things. And then I went more on the male side. And we've been running ever since. And, you know, a few weeks back, we were able to add Coach Rose. So that's helped out a ton, you know, a ton more too. So, yeah, probably recruiting is probably our number one emphasis. But obviously I knew – I would need help. So getting Coach Jeffrey on board was big. So back in March, whenever the whole Corona thing happened, it seemed like, you know, the whole world kind of was at a standstill. But every time I checked my Twitter, it seemed like you guys were landing somebody else and landing somebody else. Uh, did yeah. you not really get affected by the Corona? Or was it like because you're solely focused on uh, recruiting and you, you're you not competing yet? So, you know, you had that advantage, you think? or I do. I think we had a head start. Um, but it definitely hurt us, too. You know, we – we had a lot of visits scheduled, you know, but we were able to schedule, you know, during February, you know, when the rest of junior college was, you know, we, we got coach, you know, we got Eli Lloyd and Chloe Clemens, and Carrie German, you got some really talented people right away. And then, you know, right after state, you know, right bef before the district tournament, we were able to get Bryce Hatton down on a visit. We were able to get, you know, a lot of these visits going before, you know, Carlos Rufo from Minnesota was two time state champ. We were able to get those guys to visit super early where a lot of these other guys were, you know, other teams and stuff were, were competing during good. So, yeah, that definitely helped. But I think it hurt us because we had, I mean, there was a point there where we pretty much had anywhere from five to ten visits uh, set up a week between the guys and the girls' side. And then all of a sudden for that to hit, you know, right after when it did, like right after the season. And a lot of these kids didn't get an opportunity to visit. So that – that definitely hurt us. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing. Uh, let's go back to the uh, the recruiting side. I'm I love I like I'll do these interviews and stuff, and I like hearing different um, coaches' sales pitch. And growing up in Centerville, I'm curious to see what you know. How do you pitch these guys to come to Centerville? You know, obviously, you know we don't have a tradition from a wrestling standpoint, but we, you know, Indian Hills has a tradition. You know, we talk a lot about that. But then, you know. There's, you know, a lot of our more talented individuals need, you know, an environment without distractions. And this is the perfect environment for that, you know, for them academically and socially to put themselves, you know, we get kids that, you know, have the ability to be competing at the highest level, but maybe just missed, you know, in a place. Or, you know, maybe it's just, you know, they want to be in a more serious atmosphere. You know, they came from a high school room that, you know, maybe they did get it done academically and socially, but to come to a place like this and get that second chance to continue to develop. I mean, you know, Coach Jeffrey started four years for Northern Illinois and Coach Rhodes was a couple time Division II national qualifier. And, you know, for some of these guys to get on the map with those type of people and then get to some of these open tournaments that we normally go to, you know, those Division One, two, Division One schools, Division Two schools, we, you know, get that opportunity to see them, just get that exposure that maybe they didn't. You know, or maybe physically they didn't peak out in high school and, you know, with an extra year or two of maturity, now they can get that opportunity. So, yeah, I mean, is it a unique setting? Yeah, but academically, you know, socially, there's just none of those distractions. And it's just a great starting point for some of these people and, you know, a great second chance for a lot of these people too. Yeah, so you mentioned second chances. Uh, this is a question. This is an idea that I've wanted to pitch for a, long, for a few years now. Um, do you know anything about Last Chance U on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. So they have the the football series. It's not like that everywhere. I know, but I'm just saying they start though. They recently came out said that they're going to do um, a basketball season. Would you ever, if they came to you and said, "Hey, Coach Spree, we want to do wrestling," would you would you allow that, or you're like, or you want, or you kind of don't want the the negative side of that? I I mean, I don't. I would like to think that I don't get to that point, you know, and. I, I, I definitely know that I don't get to that point. I'm sure there's things that I do that would get, you know, maybe looked at a little differently, but overall, I don't think it'd be anything close to that. But, you know, would I be opposed to it? No. 
but I don't know if I'm exciting enough. You know, I'm not probably Jason Brown or a lot of those guys that got on that show. Like I, I, I probably wouldn't be as entertaining as those guys. So I don't know if they get the views that they maybe want. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would love it, man. I think somebody's got to do it. I think it'd be a great look for you guys. I'll, uh, I don't have any connections at all. I just wanted to see what your answer would be. Yeah, um, no. it's neat and it's neat for people to like see it, see it from the inside. Yeah, you know, not like how the day to day process kind of is. Kinda yeah, thing, so. yeah, that's kind of what I'm watching the show. I'm more attracted to see like their, you know, their daily life and whatnot. Um, Absolutely. All right, so. Um, so I got your recruiting pitch. When you have these families come into Centerville, where are you taking them to dinner? Uh, you know, we haven't done a ton of it, but, you know, obviously Nick and George's is great. You know, I mean, it kind of let them pick it out. You know, I'm a big breakfast guy, so Northside Diner. I love yep. Northside Diner. They've got one of the best. Lucille's has awesome burgers. That's right. You know, I love Mexican food. You know, so we'll go to La Fiesta quite a bit, I think. My wife and I have become regulars there. So, yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, definitely Nick and George's is up there and, you know, Northside Diner if it's an early recruit. So we, we kind of just feel out what, they, what they're what they looking for. I put La Fiesta up there with anywhere. I live in Des Moines now. I put La Fiesta up with all of them. I think it's the yeah, best. It's good. It is. So. And then uh, I was down last weekend. I drove the parents' golf cart up there, um, which I don't know if you're even allowed to. It's all freaking blocked off, but I found a way back mm -hmm. there. Uh, they broke ground on the on the room already. It's uh, what's the timeline looking like there? I know with Corona things are weird, but yeah. So the renovation of like the multi-purpose building, um, the weight room and the baseball locker room. That's I mean that's almost completed. The weight room is going to be sweet, you know, for us. You know, only having to share with baseball. There's not a lot of places that have spaces like that, you know, and so that's pretty awesome. And then our facility. You know, it was supposed to be early September, and then it kind of got into October, and then obviously the COVID stuff. So I think we're looking probably end of November right now is when we're going to be getting in there. Um, but we do have, obviously, Centerville High School has a phenomenal wrestling room, and uh, they don't get their season going until mid-November. So we've got that or other places. We've got some competition mats that we could put down here on campus. But um, our season technically doesn't start till. Well, January now on the men's side, but the women's we're gonna kind of just be creative, see what works best, you know, transportation wise and stuff for them to practice. But yeah, I guess the end of August there's supposed to be like five or six semi trucks coming in, and they're gonna have the whole building on it, and that's when we'll really see some progress. But yeah, they're definitely getting after it right now. And uh, competition will take place in Centerville as well. Yep, yep, um, yeah, we're gonna use one of the. Uh, one of the Centerville schools uh, for now. We're just going to see how it goes, the first one, and then we'll move. But, yeah, we're working to have something here on campus, you know, in the future. Um, so the students, they'll all come in this fall, and then uh, you, they'll have room. You guys are using Centerville in the time being to work out? Yeah. Yeah, we'll use Centerville. We'll use the multi-purpose room. You know, when we first get here, a lot of it's preseason stuff, so we won't, we can't technically be on the mat um, on the guy's side until October. Girls side is kind of a little bit more loose just because um, it's not a sanctioned sport yet on, on junior college. But we, you know, I'm, I've been working with, you know, Terry Steiner and some other junior college coaches. And he's been kind of helping us promote a, a community college national tournament. And so we're going to have that. And I think it's out in Oregon next year. So we've been really working on that. So they'll be able to start a little bit sooner, but they don't have like, some of the rules that we have on the guy's side as far as you know, when we can practice and how many people we can have in the room and all that stuff. So. Is this the first time that you've coached women's wrestling? Yeah, it is. Um, be an interesting piece. Um, you know, we're all kind of learning together. Um, but, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, I, from the recruiting standpoint, especially, girls like to make their mind up. Boys like to play the game. And, and you know, just, you know, I'd rather be, you know, straightforward with us and so i i've enjoyed that piece of it and you know we've done some clinics and stuff like that but yeah it'll definitely be a little bit of a learning curve but you know, i'm pretty excited about it since the whole women's wrestling thing is kind of all relatively new here um on the men's side of things you can track these guys um from really early on you know like you can go, with track wrestling you can go back to their youth days if you really wanted to how do you go about recruiting um women if there's not as much data to kind of go off of compared to the guys? 
you do got to do a little bit more digging, you know, and, and that's something, you know, I was doing early on and then coach Jeffrey kind of took over, you know, and, and I showed him some things that we had, but we, we got out there, you know, we, we went to the Florida state girls tournament. We went to the Texas, you know, the Cypress, you know, they have a humongous like 60 team girls tournament down in Texas. You know, we went down there, we went to the Missouri regionals. We, you know, we, went out to Illinois, we, you know, we went to the Iowa, obviously all the Iowa State tournament, you know, and a couple of the tournaments for the girls in Iowa, but you, know, you got to do a little bit more digging, you know, and there's a lot of girls out there that either their school doesn't allow it or their state doesn't allow it, so they're still competing just on the girls side, or on the guy side, they're competing on the guy side, so you got to do even more digging for them, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely a sport that hasn't been as exposed so you do have to do a little bit more digging, but yeah, I mean, we go through a lot of brackets and, you know, you can kind of, the ones that aren't as fortunate and can't compete against other girls, you can kind of go through, you know, track wrestling, everybody's got to put their roster on there. So you can go state by state and just kind of, you know, they'll say like male, female, senior, whatever, you know, we kind of just from there do Google searches and send emails to coaches and just figure out what might be available. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to try to make it down for the home opener, whenever that may be. Um, hopefully it happens, right? Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you guys – think... go ahead. I think it will. I think it will. I think, you know, honestly, I was telling somebody, you know, it's not ideal, but it's kind of neat to see junior college being proactive. You know, normally we follow everything, you know, it's because we're you know, we're not Division One, and Division One kind of sets the tone. But, you know, CSB proactive, you know, you keep hearing about the spike potentially happen in, you know, November, December, whatever, you know, I, I'm hoping with the moves that we made that it will happen, you know, the season and stuff. So yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah, we hope it happens too. And not only is it your inaugural year, it's our inaugural year. We started back oh, yeah. in, uh, in April. So we're trying to build this foundation before wrestling starts, but we might have a whole extra redshirt year before we really start, you know, kicking it in. Yep, yep. But, so right now just doing a lot of these interviews and stuff. Yeah. Yep. So, um, during quarantine, I actually kind of started doing it before quarantine. I bought the stuff back in February, March, and then, uh, the quarantine happened. I had nothing to do for two months. I wasn't working and just started cranking it out and, uh, it's been fun. And I'm, you know, you were the, one of the guests that my mom's a big wrestling fan. She's like, you got to get close Brian. on when you're going to have him on when you, I was like, mom, I, I told her like, relax, I'll do it. And uh, the other day when I messaged uh, whoever runs your guys' Instagram account, um, she she was hammering me all day. Has he responded yet? I'm like, it's gonna happen. So I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you coming That's on. Fun. I I, yeah. I, I definitely no. if you see her and my aunt Kathy up there, I definitely recommend having security nearby because they'll be on the mats <laughs> in no time. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I will. So yeah, and no, they're, they're gonna try to tell you how to coach your wrestlers. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. If you hear squeeze, uh, if you hear squeeze, 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 that's them. That's them. Yeah. That's funny. I'll let them know. It's Lori, right? That's right. Yeah. Lori and Kathy, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know it's exactly who they are. So yeah. yep. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. We'll be paying attention. I'm gonna try to come down there. Uh maybe we can do some stuff once the room's going and and uh show off your facilities and we can talk about that Absolutely. later. Yeah, definitely get in contact and we can maybe do a tour or maybe have meet Absolutely. with a couple of guys and girls and stuff. And yep. I think that'd be really awesome. So you bet, I man. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care, Zach. Yep. Bye-bye.